Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be doing an overview of patch 5.05. Apologies for my volume being a little bit low, but it is just after midnight that I am recording this video, so I'm not trying to be too super loud, and I just woke up to get ready for the patch. So patch 5.05, Eden Savage, Treasure Dungeon for Shadowbringers, and job changes. Those are the big three things we're looking to see in these patch notes, and I am hoping I will not be disappointed as I'm glancing through them for the first time. So without further ado, let's get started. Honestly, this shouldn't be too long a video, but it depends on how long we take to actually go into the job changes. Um, nerfing an old 2.x quest. Uh, re oh, actions required to complete the monk quest have been adjusted. Oh yeah, I remember hearing somebody mention this. I can't remember what exactly what it said, but there was issues with actually completing it. Okay, that's fine. Um, dungeon of Ligia. This is a treasure dungeon. Now, I've got some old videos on treasure dungeons, and it's personally one of my favorite pieces of content, where you go into this dungeon with this, uh, where you basically are gambling to get more and more loot over and over again. You have the frustration of being kicked out very quickly, and you have the excitement of trying to make it into the deepest floors. It's a great activity with friends, with pug groups, and uh, I hope to see a lot of people enjoying Treasure Dungeons and Shadowbringers. I probably won't be getting into any of them until after Savage myself, but all the same, uh, really looking forward to seeing what rewards actually come from that this time around. <clears throat> so free company, new craftable items for the workshop, new submersible parts, destinations for the submersibles, maximum level of the submersibles, and the selection of items from the voyages. I don't mess around with this stuff too much. You know, I see my FC send them out and, you know, retrieve them all the time. But I, I don't pay too much attention to uh, the free company workshop stuff. <laughs> New furnishings. Oh, that's uh, that's terrifying, <laughs> to, to put it lightly. Um, I have a feeling a lot of houses are going to be using uh, Dapper Dapper Pepe's for their, uh, for their, uh... oh, that's the doll. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I thought that was the servants that you can hire. That's just a doll that sits on a table. And now that I've seen the doll that sits on the table and mentioned this, people are going to want the servants to be Dapper Pepe's. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see how long that takes. New orchestral roles have been added. Now, because it's a Savage patch, we've had extra songs in Savage for the past few years because we've had extra phases in Savage for the last few years. So, for new orchestral roles, the ones that come to mind are ones that would come from Ligia, the Treasure Dungeon, and Savage. So I'm really uh, waiting to get to that Savage section because there's one thing in particular I'm looking for in that Savage section to uh, to determine whether or not I'll believe that we got no door bosses. So let's see. All right, battle system. Okay, before we get into Savage, though, we got job changes. And it starts with Monk, which is a job I'm very, very familiar with over the past few years. And I'm not a big fan of the way it is now. It's very strong right now, but I'm just not a fan of the way that it plays. So let's see what's actually going on here. If my Friggin' mustache would stop curling into my mouth. I gotta trim this bad boy. Alright, effect duration for the three forms. Increased to 15 seconds. Solid quality of life. Radius of Mantra going up to 15 yams. Insanely good quality of life because Mantra already got a really, really nice buff going into Shadowbringers in regards to the number of actions that it would apply to. Um, form shift. The Coral form bonus extends Grease Lightning duration to maximum has been added. So I'm, does, I'm guessing they mean that if you press form shift and you go into Coral or you press form shift when you're already in Coral. One of the two is what it means right there. Um, or it uh, it means when you actually hit. Oh, it's just saying that you get that bonus. So form shift just extends Grease Lightning duration to max. Oh, that's really, really useful. Holy moly. You can't run that. You literally can't run out of Grease Lightning. It's impossible. It's there's literally no way with that change alone. That's pretty. That's a pretty substantial change if I'm understanding it correctly. In terms of just it, wow. Okay, didn't expect that. Meditation. The effect of oh, <laughs> we asked for that for years. I'm actually surprised they waited till 0.05 and just didn't launch it with that. Going right into the expansion. Yeah, you just press it once outside of combat and you get all five. I've been saying that for ages too. All right, that's good. Better late than never. Riddle of Earth, Earth's Reply bonus now nullifies all action direction requirements. Oh, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's, wow, holy moly. Um, so that's, so when, so just to be clear, Earth's Reply is after you've been hit with Riddle of Earth. It's not the, not the effect you just have natively. Okay, wow. Um, that blows my mind. That's, that's really amazing. For monks, okay, wow, I'm, that's exciting. I, I actually want to level monk now. 
Uh, okay. Riddle of Fire effect increases weapon skill recast time by 15% has been removed, and sub subsequently they reduced its damage that it grants by 5%. Um, I don't know the math on that, but I know a lot of people have been asking for that since Riddle of Fire was initially introduced. It's just a straight up 25% damage increase now for its duration uh, without the speed decrease. So, um, I, man, without reducing the speed, I wonder where that puts it because it's still going to be really strong. It's just going to be a lot more fun to play with now. So, wow, these changes are insane. And then you can only use Chakra and Enlightenment in combat. Okay, those are those are all really good monk changes. I will say though that I didn't think they would touch the Anatman thing going into uh, going into 5.05. I felt like it was too soon for them to have a proper solution for that. But all this stuff is really really solid. Um, I personally am just really not a fan of the timing that has to happen with uh, with Anatman. So uh, there's there's that. But I mean, I would not be upset at any of this stuff. This is all still really really good monk changes i know monks are gonna absolutely love all this stuff all right ninja ah i am so sorry ninjas okay i will say this gust slash i think is like it's a pretty high percentage of the dps this is this is more than it seems this is actually probably like this is a minimum of probably like a hundred 150 dps i i'd imagine unless something's changed and gust slash isn't still like eight to ten percent of the damage they deal across the whole fight because it's like an integral part of all their rotations um i think that actually is not negligible but probably not what ninjas need I'm, I'm of the opinion that we don't see any major major ninja changes till by five like by 5.2 i think like warrior level changes um either happen in a point one or a point two not in a point oh one and a point oh five not that there weren't substantial changes in 4.05 for warrior but some of the biggest changes for warrior have come in like 2.1 4.1 4.2 3.1 like i think back to all those patches and i remember really really big things for warrior at a lot of points when people were like not 100 percent sold on changes they had made so ninjas i honestly i i thought maybe a little more than that but I also didn't think you'd get a full uh, a full fixer upper by 5.05. So if you're still enjoying it, enjoy what is probably like a 1.5%. I'm sure somebody knows the actual number out there, like a 1 to 1.5% DPS increase. At least it's 50 potency and not like 10. Samurai. Okay, Samurai. Mech Yoshi Sui. Recast time reduced to 55 seconds. I'm assuming that's mostly to adjust for skill speed. That way... um. You know, because, yeah, I'd have to assume that's because uh, the just the skills you would use it on, I, I don't know what I'm saying. All I'm saying is it, it probably has to do with the skill speed adjustment. Um, that's that's what I would assume with that. Meditate effect duration increased from 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. I guess I should actually look to see what meditate's recast time is then, shouldn't I? Because if that means that you can... Uh, if, if the Meditate effect lasts 45 seconds, now I kind of want to look to see what the duration of Meditate is, or what the recast time on Meditate is. I think it's it's longer than 45 seconds. I'm just trying to think if what the actual change there is accomplishing, and I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I just don't have much experience on it. Let me see if I have my old... Uh, at the very least, I'd like to look at my Media Tour stuff real quick, which is not, you know, not an accurate judge of live servers, but... <clears throat> no, no, I don't have it. Anyway, regardless. Okay, regardless, uh, that means something. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section the effect duration of Meditate going up by 15 seconds, if it, uh, what it effectively means. Cast time on Tsubama Geishi and all the Keishi versions have been made instant. That's actually a really, really nice buff because uh, while Samurai gets a trait that reduces the cast time of Iajutsu skills early on, um, these because they essentially um, doubled the amount of uh, spells that they had to cast, they actually spent more time casting in this expansion than they did in the last one. So this is a really nice buff that should make for a much uh, smoother style of play for Samurai. And Shoha... Okay, so the potency went up um, on all the stacks prior to 5. The maximum is still 500, but the skill is inherently more valuable at 1 and 2 stacks, especially because it's 100 and 300. 
as opposed to 50 and 100. So really short downtimes, it becomes good to try and uh, optimize those meditates a little bit more. Still not the most thrilling of level 80 skills, but you know what? I Going back up to Monk, I grew up in this game with Monk getting a bunch of abilities that were entirely situational and made for very awkward uses for years and years and years. Doesn't mean I wish it upon Samurais, but... It also means I have a hard time sympathizing with them. So getting the change to make it so it's more valuable at 1 and 2 for Shoha is definitely a good thing. And it's more valuable at 3 and 4 also. But um, the fact that 1 and 2 especially makes really short downtimes a little bit more valuable. Machinist, Reassemble, having its recast time reduced 55. Again, that's probably just to account for skill speed. Uh, I, again, I don't know exactly how that accounts for skill speed on Samurai, but for Machinist, I'm 100% sure that that's what it was for. So I'm sure for Samurai, it uh, adjusts for something similar as well. Um, then we have Summoner, um, which didn't really get too much. Summon time, recast time down to 3 seconds. Okay, that's always nice. This is really nice. This has been years and years and years in the making. I'm surprised this took them so long to do. Uh, the delay before the status is applied has been reduced. Uh, yeah, that's been something they've really needed for a long time. And other jobs have gotten quality of life adjustments over the years that are similar. But uh, yeah, that's good. It's you know better late than never on Bio and uh, Tried Disaster when it comes to that one. Red Mage. I can already see MP costs reduced across the board. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying MP has been kind of rough on Red Mage. That's a pretty substantial MP change, though. Um, that's like, what, 33% there, 25% there, 25% there? Yeah, it's like just 100 from every single one of those abilities. So anywhere from 20 to, like, 33%, that's pretty significant. While their MP costs um, went up comparatively in Shadowbringers, I don't know that it went up by 33% in some cases, so... With this, Red Mages will probably feel a lot more free to actually use Lucid Dreaming. Even without anything, like a th an external source like uh, Refresh or any of that, this should make Red Mage feel a lot more like its Stormblood uh, incorporation in regards to MP usage, which is going to make the job. The job is already, I really, really like the strength of Red Mage right now, um, and this is going to go a long way for that. I do, it does make me kind of feel bad for Summoners, because Summoners had that kind of going for them, where their MP... Was he a little bit easier to manage? And they had options in regards to MP uh, expenditure. And they're still way more complicated to play than Red Mage. The damage is still relatively close, um, last I checked. So I'm curious to see. Again, I think Summoner and Ninja will probably be two jobs we'll see more changes for going into point one and point two, um, several months down the line. But this is really nice for Red Mages. And uh, they should feel a little bit less uh, restricting to play than they do right now. Also, Enchanted Reprise having its potency increased and its mana cost, the black and white mana, I should be more clear, um, cost reduced should make it a, a little bit more usable because Enchanted Reprise is really supposed to be a, I, I think it's supposed to be like an excess dump slash movement skill. It, it, it's, I had it described to me from Red Mage as like a scathe that is also used for um, dealing with overcapped mana in a sense. So I'm not sure exactly how accurate that statement is because I don't play it. I just what just what's been relayed to me, but that makes it a little bit stronger, and uh, that's not a bad thing. Uh, I don't think. Scholar, well, I mean, scholar's a healing god. So art of war going up to 160, um, and it looks like broil mastery is just the trait that does that. And sucker having its having its cast time reduced is okay, but and I, the one thing I keep saying is just give them energy drain back. That's all they need. Um, I will say, though, that I know that in the patch notes, they do changes separate from new skills being added back. They normally don't put new skills that have been added back here. It's a little bit down lower, so I guess there's still hope. Astro. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of changes. Uh, so a lot of people have been saying they needed potency um, increases, and it looks like they gave... Oh, Gravity only being 1.5 seconds, Helios only being 2 seconds, Gravity having its potency increase, Aspected Helios having its healing increase, although its barrier nullification took a massive hit in regard to that because their potency was doubled, so they halved the barrier damage nullification. Um, cast time being reduced, Light Speed only being 90 seconds, um, and then uh, this, they just flat made it 90 seconds instead of being reliant on Essential Dignity. Celestial Opposition's only a minute now. Again, that had its healing potency double. Oh, Celestial Opposition is way better and easier to use with the 15 Yalms. Horoscope, the um, healing potency during Horoscope is increased by an extra 100. Horoscope Helios effect duration increased to 30 seconds, so it's a little more flexible. Divination, I've been saying 
bring it down to two minutes. I've been saying that, and that's the thing, Astro, if you actually play it really well, their raid DPS contribution is very significant, but it just didn't make sense to me for Divination to be three minutes, so I'm really glad to see that. That actually shows I've seen a lot of Astros ask for that. That's a big, big listen when it comes to people's feedback. Um, Divination being 456 versus 246, you know, um, considering it's 120 seconds, I see a big reason why they did that. Because they want to, because now you have less time to actually make the correct decisions to get you there. Um, either way, I'm, I guess I'm impartial. Most most divinations end up at six percent as long as you're paying some attention to the cards you're drawing. And speaking of cards you're drawing, sleeve draw looks like you got a pretty significant change here. Um, so the effect that it had before is it would uh, reset the recast timer of draw as soon as you used it. And then every time you drew a card, it would reduce the recast time of your next draw to three seconds. So that way you could draw, use the card, a couple of seconds later, you'd be able to draw again. It was a really, really rough thing to use in the opener from what Astros tell me, because it's very, very time consuming to go through all of those draws, because you not only need to draw the card, you need to play the card, and sometimes you need to redraw the card. There's just so much OGCD usage there that sometimes actually getting to use your GCD skills and get your cards pumped out to get a very quick divination is a little clunky. That was what I was told. Um, but it looks like it's got a new effect. Uh, draws a card from your divining deck and grants two stacks. So instead of resetting the recast, the skill itself will draw the card and then give you stacks of sleeve draw. And the stacks of sleeve draw just automatically draw another card. So it cut out a ton of button presses. You still need to redraw if you don't like the result that you get, but it cuts out every individual press of draw that you would have used. And that's a pretty significant um, quality of life change for Asher. I really, really like this for sleeve draw. Should be much, much smoother to use now than it was before. And finally, Celestial Intersection. Uh, that had its healing potency increase by 25%. Damage barrier nullification got hit by 50%, and the regen potency was increased by a pretty substantial amount. 70 potency on the regen potency effect. Overall, really, really good changes for Astro. I think they'll be a lot happier with all this. Light speed helps their mana, uh, helps them deal with mana. Sleeve draw helps with OGCD management whenever that cooldown is actually available. Divinations once every two minutes instead of three. A lot of really, really solid stuff between potencies, OGCD potencies, and how effective they can use their time. So I'm a big, big fan of these changes. All right. New actions have been added. Wait, Hagakure? They're giving them back Hagakure? Now, I will say that's really interesting because they took it away and gave them Ikishoten and they still have Ikishoten. So now they have Hagakure and Ikishoten on Samurai. That's a lot of extra. Ooh, that's gonna that's gonna be substantial in regards to the changes that S Samurai's gonna have to adjust to that stuff, you know, a little bit after the servers actually go live. That's, that's very, very interesting that they gave them back Hagakure. Um, really, wow, okay, I'm gonna have to watch that carefully. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Scholars, you got energy drain back. You're welcome. All right, that's all I needed to say. Healing actions per performed outside of combat no longer build a limit gauge. That was something that they needed to do. There was a new LB cheese going around, and uh, not even new. It was one that already existed, but because the, old, the, the barrier LB cheese was gone, uh, people were doing this, and yeah, people wanted it gone. People who were who noticed that this thing worked wanted it gone. Raid Dungeon Eden's Gate Savage has been added. Oh, yeah. All right, so 440, 445, 450, 450. That's all standard. Okay, so this was actually the thing I wanted to see. So I was always, I by the way, this has nothing to do with the order. I was, I always said they're going to be the same order. There's no doubt in my mind they're the exact same order. One, two, three, four, same order. This, this was what I wanted to see because this is the exact same way they did timers in Stormblood for Savage because they had that extra phase in the final fight. And I didn't mean extra phase, they straight up had like an extra encounter. But they told us, they told me specifically in the interview I did with Yoshida that they were pivoting away from just doing the door boss style thing like X Death. So I'm wondering if that just means that the amount of new stuff which I'm really hoping for like a supersized Archaean Titan. It's the big wish that I have ever since uh, we got in there a couple weeks ago. If they're adding a, like a new phase like that and it's a substantial portion of the encounter, even if it's not necessarily a door boss, then I totally understand why they would do that. But that screams to me that there's going to be two Titan phases. Um, at, the, at the very least, 
there's going to be something so substantial there that it needs that extra 30 minutes to understand. For me, that screams Neil X, Death, God, Kefka, God, Omega. Um, I now, until until I see further results, I'm going to assume that Small Titan is the door boss and Big Titan is the uh, real boss. That's just going to be what I guess. I'm not going to change my mind. Well, you change my mind after I see it. But anyway, um, they actually ended up making the Eden's Gate Savage entry in Amarang. I went to the Minstreling Wanderer for my logout. Um, so I'll just have to go over there to uh, Luri and Amarang as a level 80 disciple of War or Magic. So I'll head there when the servers actually come up. So um, upon completing Eden Gate Savage duties, this was another thing I really wanted to see. The loot system. A uh, treasure coffer will appear containing an Eden Grace coffer. Using this item transforms it into gear corresponding to the user's current job. In addition, the coffers that appear upon completing each Eden's Gate Sepulcher Savage yields weapons. Unlike previous Savage Raid, treasure coffers do not yield armor and accessories. So they did make this change. This was something that was said in interviews that they would be um, changing coffers. Uh, they would be changing loot entirely so that you could always get the loot that you wanted. So essentially now what will happen is it'll drop ring coffers, bracelet coffers, necklace coffers, and, and then... You just give those pieces to whoever, and when they open it on whatever job they plan on using it on, I hear a motorcycle in the distance. It's really late for that. Um, they'll just be getting um, whatever piece for the job they're on. This makes loot distribution a lot easier. It means every single week, no piece of loot will go to waste. Unless everyone in your group has every piece that they could ever want, all that matters is assigning loot. It does also mean, however, that for pugs, everyone is always rolling against each other there's never oh i'm the only summoner i'm the only caster so any caster loot is mine that is the downside of this type of system for pickup groups who now will always have to compete against everybody you're doing pickup groups with now of course there's going to be the rng uh the rng mitigation in regards to the books but it's definitely going to be a rougher life for people doing pug groups who are going to be pugging with different people. It may encourage people who do pug groups to try and make friends to run consistently with to more, uh, you know, even if it's just two or three people out of the pug to try and mitigate the amount of uh, RNG that they probably have to deal with there. Um, and then they explain the rest of the rules, which will be pretty standard. Um, and uh, we should be good to go. The rest of this stuff is all standard stuff I've covered in all various videos, stuff that's been standard to the raid scene for us for quite some time. The books are stuff you'll get on every kill on the first week, uh, first kill of every week. Um, and uh, interesting. I think that's a typo. The waste of that just being just one book. I think that's just a typo. I think that's supposed to say times four because that's that doesn't make any sense because all the other ones are times four. Why would the waste not be times four? Yeah, that's probably just a typo. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, I, I know some people are probably going to ask me what I feel about that. I actually don't care. This doesn't bother me at all. I leveled four jobs to 80 leveling my trusts. So whatever, I'm already done. People who are waiting for it, haven't started yet. Their journey is just beginning. I also don't know how much that's going to increase by, um, if it's doubled, that's going to be really nice for people coming later. If it's like, if it shaves off like two dungeons a level or something like that, it's not as big a deal. It's still going to be like dozens of hours of doing trust dungeons, but I already have them at 80, so this doesn't bother me at all. I'm good to go. New elite marks. These are probably S ranks for uh, Calusia, Amarang, and Lakeland, which they've been absent because those are beginner zones for the Shadowbringers areas. So this means more S ranks. Um, Allegan Tombstone's a Phantasmagoria. That's just a weekly cap Tombstone that caps at 450. Um, and then they've added it to a bunch of stuff. This is all really standard stuff <clears throat> for those of us who have been playing for a while. PvP adjustments. I don't really have much to say about this. All the tanks got raised to 20,000. Uh, the melees got raised to 17.5,000. I think I could actually predict what's about to happen after this. <clears throat> and so all of them had their HP increase. Um, and heavy metal and light metal are gone. I wonder why. I actually kind of, kind of liked heavy metal and light metal for the feast. So I'm curious what the uh, more hardcore PvPers have to say about that. New items being introduced. Yeah, buddy. Ready to go. New recipes being added. We got a nice new outfit right there. Of course, we've got our crafted gear. That's going to be item level 450, no doubt. That's also going to be available in this patch. And I think you can tell I kind of need to blow my nose after this. I'm getting kind of nasally. New master recipes have been... Is that a fly flying bed? That is a fantastic mount. That's probably from Ligia, yeah, or it's crafted or something. It'd be funny if that was the savage mount. <laughs> 
They didn't want to show us the the all Titan vehicle at that one. A new minion has been added. Yeah, yeah. So I'm almost definite that the doll, the minion, this, they're all probably from the new treasure dungeon. New achievements have been added. New titles have been added. Another summoning bell in the Crystarium. Looks like that's near the Crystalline Mean. That's really solid. And then it's just on to resolved issues. Um, safe place to hide. Quest required to use Lustrate. Be used outside of combat, but you couldn't do that. So <laughs> I remember some people talking about that. This one's funny because the odds of anyone actually doing this was pretty insane, but also completely possible. Um, attack on High Bridge. Uh, more than one Bertram would appear. Garuda Eggy. Uh, to Carbuncle would cause an ability to be displayed. Tooltips for Tri Disaster were wrong. Uh, the information regarding potency in the tooltips for Tornado Kick was wrong. The damage is still the same, but the display is fixed. So it wasn't buffed, it's just that it'll display properly now. Issue in the tooltips for Temperance were incorrect in PvP. Okay, nothing too major here. Others' various addresses were also addressed then we are good to go overall some really nice job changes not all the job changes people wanted but a, f a fairly substantial amount of them um <clears throat> of course i'm still waiting for some dancer quality of life stuff but dancer is performing really well now that we've gotten the new pdf pdps and rdps columns in uh in uh ff logs so they don't need any numerical buffs so they have to be pretty careful about the buffs that i was suggesting in my more recent dancer video but overall, uh, pretty solid stuff. Really looking forward to getting into Eden Savage. Uh, we're going to be live streaming all day for Eden Savage with a few 30-minute breaks once in a while for food, drink, all that basic stuff. So I'm going to go get ready for that at this point. Get this video rendered, get this out to you on YouTube, and then get ready to go live where we'll probably just talk about some patch notes for an hour or so before we hop into Eden Gate Savage. Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought of the changes. Let me know what you thought of 5.05's patch notes uh, in the comment section of the video below. And be sure to tune in for some Savage footage. We'll also be posting our first kills of everything on the YouTube channel and uh, very quick breakdowns of those fights probably in the morning tomorrow. Um, some like little miniature guides, not kind of like what I did for uh, Titania, uh, where I just kind of do the descriptions because I'm going to be spending a lot of time in Savage until it's cleared, uh, which I'm hopeful, hope hopefully I have it cleared by Thursday. Fingers crossed, unless Titan ends up being some sort of monster when it comes to the Sepulcher, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see all of you, hopefully, in the live stream for Savage or in the next video. Until then, take care.